Welcome to Design Dispatches, where every week we talk to distinguished people from across the design community about their cultural landscape and how they got to where they got to. And this week it's Yves Bahar, the Swiss-born but West Coast of American-based designer and entrepreneur and educator, who founded Fuse Project in 1999. Fifteen years later he sold it, but he's still CEO. His designs range from everything from the sail chair for Herman Miller to uh, the jam box that he developed for Jawbone, of which he was chief the creative officer for about 14 years. He's also helped pioneer social design initiatives from prefabricated housing for farming communities in Latin America to the One Laptop, One Child project for which he was chief industrial designer. Eve, welcome. Um, you have a broad portfolio as a designer. Um, is your cultural landscape now in lockdown, reading what you're listening to, what you're watching, is that broad or are you very focused in what you consume? Well, first, um, thank you. And thank you to the, the, to the Design Museum for doing this. Um, yes, so I'm here in uh, Northern California, a little bit north of San Francisco um, for the time being, for, um, for lockdown. And, um, you know, I'm, um, I have a couple of books I'm reading. I'm working a lot. Um, the team is very active, um, you know, with clients and partners. Um, we actually, strangely enough I have um a lot of launches this month and next month so i'm reading a book uh called 1491 which is about um the american continent um uh, pre uh columbus and and um, um uh you know and it's really absolutely fascinating um because it does talk a lot about um, how cultures are changed by dramatic events and, um, you know, the, the dramatic events of uh, people coming to the Americas and bringing with them some of their disease and viruses. So it is, um, <laughs> it is sort of an appropriate read, I guess. It's funny how everything, everything now seems filtered through the lens of, of where we are. Um, but obviously, historically, um, there's many antecedents in your design. Um, when did you realize you wanted to be a designer? What, were you, was this very young or something that happened in, in, in teens? That happened in my teens. And I consider myself extremely lucky to have found a passion, something I just wanted to do so early on. Uh, when I was 14, 14 or so, I really um, was taken by the punk movement. Um, you know, and, and one of the reasons I think is because it almost gave me a license to try things, to go into my parents' basement, um, to make clothes, to make furniture, um, to be an amateur, uh, but to hack the process essentially and to do it myself and to be proud of um, the odd results <laughs> that came out of that. Um, and so, you know, the, the sort of the punk culture of making um, of, of, of trying new things um, and um, was, was really my, my starting point in design. Are you still hands-on? Are you making, do you still make a lot in order to experiment and explore? Oh, absolutely. I, I find the best part of the process, of the design process, what gets me up in the morning is uh, sketching, um, making prototypes, reviewing prototypes. How, how is your workspace or the place in which you work and the way that you work, how is that fundamentally altered by lockdown? So everything is different. Um, I'm working from home. I have a desk here. I'm on Zoom calls a lot. Um, at the same time, I really marvel at how productive we are. Um, you know, my team uh, and I are doing brainstorms, sketching, doing presentations, um, getting new projects started, having kickoff meetings. Um, it really feels like some of this experience is um, is 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 uh, progress in a sense. It's, um, it's more efficient. Um, it also is more personal, you know, when you see people's homes and their pets and their friends and um, well, no, their kids, not their friends. Um, and, uh, and, and their interior where they live and how they live. Um, it feels, um, more personal. It feels also more flexible. Um, you're more focused on the work and the people who are doing this work. Um, there's no politics. 
Um, there is no politics of the environment, politics of the business. Um, it's, um, it's, it's much more about how you're doing, how you're feeling, and let's do the work together. Um, and I, I like that. This is certainly something I will take into, um, into you know, normal times. I, I like that idea that it, it takes the politics out of it. I suppose also context, you know, you, you, we, we're in lockdown in our houses, but we relate to friends and colleagues in different ways now. Um, you're, as I said, Swiss born, but American based. Uh, does the context in which you have worked have a very strong impact on what you do? Or is the process for you of designing and thinking often at the sense of retreating into a private space to, to, to crack the solutions to whatever problem you're looking at? I mean, for me, the context was uh, transformational. Being in San Francisco, working on um, new ideas, working with people in completely different worlds, people in science, people in uh, business, uh, people in technology, um, and, and them seeing you know, my, my contribution um, as uh, complementary and essential essential to what um, to what they do so we could all be creative together and for the last 25 years um, I really have to say this this has been form formative in terms of how I design what I work on how I see the sense of possibility um, and um, you know it, it's truly an extraordinary place where people from all over, all around the world have really converged here um, and are very open about what they're doing very um it's not secretive people share and the you know the what they appreciate is in that sharing if you have something um to add if you if you have a, a point to make um and that's a you know that that was fundamentally transformational for me especially coming from switzerland which at the time wasn't about change so much of course the spirit of change and, and entrepreneurship and uh, making a difference. Um, that spirit is now everywhere. Um, but 25 years ago, when I first came here, um, I really found it um, extraordinary. And does that sense of the startup culture of, 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 of uh, California and of, of Silicon Valley and of, of San Francisco, does that still pervade what, what is possible there? Or is that over mythologized now? You know, I think what I find um, very interesting is um, it started here, uh, certainly, and but now I find it everywhere. So in a way, it's been the biggest idea of, of Silicon Valley, San Francisco, of the startup world, um, isn't the singular idea, isn't a singular notion. It's simply um, the, 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 the bigger idea that you know anybody can start something. So we work with with people in Africa. We work with uh, entrepreneurs um, in Asia, in Europe, everywhere. And that's that spirit is really the big idea that has come out of San Francisco and Silicon Valley. Is the fact that um, you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to be very experienced. Um, you know, you just have to work on an idea um, by yourself with a team. Um, and, and it's really opened up the possibilities. I mean, it used to be that really to be successful, you had to join a big company. You had to be, um, you know, you, you, you had to conform. You had to wear the suit. You had to wear the tie. Um, you had to have a certain diploma. You had to be a certain age. You had to conform in so many ways into a box. Um, and um, I think that's that's very different. I mean, in in the in the United States, you know, fifty one percent of the billion dollar companies that have been created in the last 10, 15 years have have been created by immigrants, people who've just come here, who recently arrived here. Um, I think that is um, that is an extraordinary number that shows you that um, that outside of the traditional conformity of business, um, the opportunities are there for the people who are willing to take the risk. Do you think that 
punk experimental idea and risk and to hell with 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 the system does that is that still possible for someone as successful a designer as you well i'm very lucky i mean i 50 percent of my work is done in um in the startup world um and so i love this question by the way um i think the idea of taking risks um is something that I embraced uh, when I was a teenager. Um, I didn't feel that was understood then. I didn't feel like um, I, I, I lived in an environment that uh, appreciated that very much, but that was part of punk, right? Uh, pushing against, um, against boundaries, um, societal boundaries around you. And in some ways, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, working with, uh, partnering with so many startups also means that you're pushing against or certain established way of thinking um, uh, or, or established companies, uh, established networks. Um, and I, I find um, you, you know, and obviously you have to give yourself and the world has to give you permission to not always be right. In fact, uh, a fair amount of times, um, you know, your thesis, you're pushing against the status quo is wrong. Um, but they're, you know, great learnings. And um, I think, you know, I think without that risk taking, uh, not only we wouldn't have, you know, success at the other hand at times, but we also wouldn't have learning. Uh, and learning is a basic uh, fact of being a designer. And I think it's a basic um, element of being a human being. Is there a sense in your career where, one design above all has triggered the way you've subsequently worked or is it always cumulative is it or is it all it's, it's always um, both cumulative and specific to what you've just done because you work so broadly it's an odd question but i'm just curious about staging posts in people's career and whether there are certain things they do that have a significant or substantial effect on the rest of their career it's undeniable that there are certain projects that have um, that that are sort of important milestones, you know, in a career. Um, you know, in mine, you know, the sale chair with Herman Miller, um, the one laptop per child, the Jambox. Uh, more recently, you know, the Snoo, the happiest baby Snoo. But at the same time, you know, what what's visible, what people see, and how people recognize your work and, and your role in, in design, you know, isn't always reflective of, you know, where you learn and how you learn. You know, of course you learn some things from your successes, but you also learn a lot from things that um, maybe no one has noticed or, or that were not uh, successes. And so, um, you know, to me, every project, when I, when I think about the next project and the next thing that I'm excited about, um, the lessons aren't always these well-known projects. The lessons come from uh, small elements, small moments um, of trial and error, um, you know, throughout, you know, throughout um, the last 20 years of, of my work. Just think about the punk. Are you are you going back to uh, to to the punk era at the moment in your musical listening? I, what are you listening to? Um, I love this question too because um, we were we were lucky to come shelter in place um, here in Bolinas, and I had gotten a, um, a vinyl um, uh, um, a record player. Um, uh, that which I never had installed, but I, I, I put that in the car uh, when we drove up here and I installed it here and I had a pile of records, uh, some recent and some older ones. And so I've been, I've been listening to, to vinyl, which in terms of quality is so much better. Um, but also, you know, rediscovering a number of, um, of albums, um, you know, from, from way back when. So it's, oh, uh, give us a playlist. What have you, give us a playlist. <laughs> Um, you know, everything from the Smith and the police and, um, um, I mean, there's so many Susie and the Banshees and, uh, Buzzcocks, the and Clash, mm -hmm. Buzzcocks, Clash Clash. and, you know, like, like all these, like uh, all these bands and I mix it, obviously it's a little bit 
sometimes incongruous for young ears, like my kids' ears. Um, but I also, um, you know, I mix it with a lot of jazz albums, uh, Miles Davis and others that I've loved over time. Um, and as well as some contemporary stuff, but uh, I've become a little bit obsessed with vinyl. And one good thing is you can still go online and order, you know, uh, original vinyls from people and they, the post office still working. And, you know, I go to the post office and I get these vinyls. It's, it's, I'm really living a retro life in a way, you know, with vinyl and the post office <laughs> and <laughs> sketching. Um, but of course, all of that now on Zoom with um, dozens, sometimes hundreds of people on it when we, when we do conferences, virtual conferences. So it's a retro future life in a way. Great. I love that retro future, that the cyclical nature of design. You mentioned that you, you're in Bolinas, uh, the town in Northern California where everyone's been tested. Can I ask you an intrusive question? Have you been tested? Sure. Yes, I have. And, well, and the whole family, the, everyone, all of our neighbors, all of our friends have been tested. And, and what yeah. was the result? And the results were? <laughs> well, the results for us yeah. and for everyone I know is that um, there is no, there's no code uh, really in, uh, in, um, in direct proximity. Um, I can't reveal the results yet because UCSF, um, the, the hospital and, and sort of research uh, body that's doing the study uh, in San Francisco will reveal the re results coming Friday. Um, but I think, um, I think the, the, the results are uh, very positive not in terms of being infected, rather, but <laughs> uh, the 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 you know the the results as far as sheltering in place, being in a small place, being in a village, essentially, um, um, seems to be the right um, the right thing to do. I'm just curious that you know one of the leading designers in America is in the community that ha that becomes this kind of case study, and I wonder whether reductively that um, triggers you to want to get involved more in design solutions for the COVID crisis, or whether that's something that you can feasibly do. Oh no, we got where well, I got involved. I was part of the group that um, that has conceived um, this testing. Um, there was a fundraising uh, that happened. We created a, a website site uh, for it um, where uh, people bought, both got information but also um, um, got a series of questions were able to make their appointments and actually we're working on a how-to book or on a um, um, uh, on a book to that looks back at everything that was done um, it's going to be a booklet rather than a book, but um, we have, uh, we're going to share this with the world. Um, we're working on designing that uh, right now, so we should have that ready in uh, the next uh, couple of weeks. We've also worked on a um, uh, <clears throat> line of posters, uh, informational posters with the team at Fuse Project. Um, I've also worked with a testing and vaccine company um, uh, named COVAX. Um, so we're doing a lot of work in the space. Um, I'm, I'm doing some independent work on masks. Some people on my team are working on ventilators. Um, there's definitely a call to arms for us, um, for, for Fuse Project and, and, and my design team, but I think for designers all around the world. And being able to jump into these solutions, grabbing a, um, you know, a sewing machine from the office and making some prototypes here and, and building things um, right here is, um, you know, I, I, I love that. It's very, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's very punk in a way. Yeah, it is. Um, we, we, we ask all, all designers whether they have advice for young designers at this particular time. Um, I wonder what yours might be. You know, I, my, my advice for designers is, um, is always to, to, in a sense, go for it, get involved, get, um, you know, sign up. Uh, there's lots of groups online and others that are, you know, not just sort of sitting idle and, um, and um, you know, and, and sort of have, have a negative outlook on everything that's happening, but rather, you know, being a designer is really about moving forward, trying things, uh, wanting to be a part of a solution participating brilliant that's great thank you that's terrific